Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast, where each episode provides in-depth insights about the long-term value of companies and ideas in our current world. Your host for this podcast is Doug Utberg, the founder and principal consultant for Business of Life, LLC. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. Now, I have Steve Hoffman with us today, and what we're going to be talking about is uh, the future of artificial intelligence, uh, or AI, as everybody says. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because there's a uh, there's a belief by a lot of people, or generally speaking in popular culture, that AI is destined to result in being this evil machine that tries to rule the world. You know, because you know, I grew up watching shows like uh, Terminator and War Games, and uh, you know there were a whole bunch of shows about some computer that eventually decided that it needed to exterminate humanity. It's what the whole Matrix series is about, et cetera, et cetera. Now, while that's certainly a possibility, it's not the only possibility. So uh, I wanted to talk about somebody who actually has some background in this uh, so that we're not just uh, bandying about pop psychology. Uh, Steve, uh, introduce yourself and uh, let's get the conversation going. So I'm Steve Hoffman. I am the captain and CEO of Founderspace. It's one of the leading startup incubators with over 50 partners in 22 countries. So I work with entrepreneurs all over the world. I work with scientists all over the world. I am also an author. And I just had two books published this year. The first one was published by HarperCollins. It's called Surviving a Startup. It's all about everything startups need to know to survive and grow. And then just released was the five forces that change everything. And this is all about how technology will change our future. It's about what we're going to be talking about today. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, if you're going to pick kind of one thing about AI that is most misunderstood, what do you think that would be? Well, like you pointed out, people are afraid of AI. And this yeah. goes all the way back to that classic movie, 2001 Space Odyssey, where the AI takes over. How the AI, the evil yes. AI. We have various permutations of this floating through the culture. Elon Musk has spoken out it, about it at length. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are very worried. And they're not worried for no reason. But I will tell you, we should be far more worried about how people abuse AI than about how AI abuses us of its own conscious free will, because that's much further out in the future. And by that time, you know, we are usually our own worst enemy. We have a history of that as human beings. So what we also need to focus on is why are we adopting AI? Why uh, is AI coming into our lives at all? And I will tell you for the, for, the, mo- the reason AI is prevalent everywhere we, we look now, like in all these de- devices, yeah. gadgets online, is because it's so useful. It is so right. incredibly, u- such a useful tool to us that we are applying it now to everything because it's one of these universal tools that can work. It can literally make any task easier, yeah. any business smarter, any production more efficient because it can do so many different, it's so flexible with deep learning algorithms, machine learning algorithms, it can learn as it goes. And we are becoming more sophisticated in how we implement AI. Interesting. So, uh, so when you think when, because one of the things you said is becoming sophisticated in how we implement AI, Uh, just because generally speaking, I found, uh, you know, so uh, my background is in finance and uh, technology, working in the tech industry, a lot of crossover with IT and project and program management. And I cannot tell you how many, uh, you know, say system or project implementations I've seen that have gone somewhere between modestly bungled uh, to just a complete biblical disaster. Um, and so based on that, I just have a hard time intuitively feeling that there is going to be an ultra high value AI that will be implemented in an intelligent way that is use- both useful and scalable. Uh, maybe that's just my skepticism coming out. So what, what we, you know, a lot of people uh, are talking about and, and are investing in open AI. And this mm-hmm. is, yeah. you know, there's a company out there called OpenAI. It's backed by Microsoft. A lot of famous people are involved with it. Elon Musk was one of the founders. Now, OpenAI claims to be on the path to creating AGI, artificial general intelligence. This is that machine that can literally do everything that humans can do, but better yeah. and more. That's still a long way off in the future. 
as far as we can tell today. What a, like you said, AI is still in its infancy and it's still yeah. hard to implement. But the, the places where AI really shines are where you get very narrow. The more yeah. narrow the problem, the easier it is for AI to solve. So for example, you know, recognizing pictures of cats online. Yeah. You know, if you just train an AI- and, uh, Now we're talking about things that are important. Right, <laughs> well, well, we all wanna know the cute kitties, right? Online. So you train an AI to do that, it can do it very well. You get to more sophisticated problems like a self-driving car, which has a lot of different variables yes. and a lot of different scenarios it can play out in, much more difficult. And we're seeing that with Elon Musk, you know, just announced today they're doing a rollback back of, you know, yeah. uh, 10,000 plus vehicles because of the AI problems and self-driving. So uh, what, but what we're going to see in, in increasingly in the future is that very narrow AIs will be targeted at sp specific tasks we need done and they will do them very well. So once you hone an AI, once you train it, once it's really focused, we'll see that happen. And I can point out some of these that will be very seductive for a lot of people. Uh, so, okay, well, yeah, I was going to say, don't don't leave us on the cliffhanger. Let us know. Uh, let us know a few a few of the things you're seeing here. So, you can imagine your everyday life uh, tasks that are very repetitive that you do, yeah. um, and we can already see permutations of this. So, for example, when I am typing now on my phone or you know on yeah. online, like with Gmail, it's going to make suggestions to complete mm -hmm. the sentence. I don't know about you, but I kind of like that. I, I find it, you know, very useful a lot of times, and it, especially on the phone, it can fee speed up dramatically yeah. what I, when I want to communicate. Voice recognition with Alexa, we can already see it. These technologies are there. They're only going to get better with more training and more data. They're going to get much better. So talking, you know, my mom literally talks to her phone all day long, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, Google voice. She's always talking to Google assistant, blah, 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 blah. And other people I know are talking to Siri if they have an Apple. So, and this is in today's permutation. It's going to get significantly better if you go out several years and even a decade or more. It's going to be amazing what that can yeah. do. Also, AI for making recommendations, like for... Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at Netflix. What's the power of Netflix? Why is, you know, anybody can get videos and put them online. Yeah. Why is Netflix so powerful? Well, the reason Netflix is so powerful is because they have built a machine that is very good at analyzing what people watch using AI and then determining what shows they should make and which will be hits. They are just really, really good at that. And then recommending, of course, to you which ones uh -huh. to watch so that when you get hooked on Netflix, they just keep giving you more of what you want and better yeah. and better and they're honing it all the time. So in these cases, AI is really working wonders. And these are just examples in our everyday life. You don't, we're not even talking about logistics and things like that, yeah. which uh, with, they're using AI supply chain. All of these things are using uh, massive amounts of data to do jobs really well. And if that sounds exciting to you, then we can kind of segue into the future and what the future may hold for us. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, because, you know, one of the things at least that I'm really big on is that, you know, I think that it's, it's really important to look at the things that are easy to miss. Uh, you know, in other words, you're trying to figure out where your blind spot is. Now, of course, the hard part is that you aren't usually able to see your own blind spot because that's why it's a blind spot. So a lot of times you need somebody else to help you really find that. But what I would like to think about with AI is I'm like, okay, there, it can't be all evil. There's, there, there, I mean, and of course there are, there are going to be uh, extremely high value use cases with AI. And so I'm really, what I'm really interested in finding out is right, you know, where are those at? you know, kind of what are the places where you find those high value use cases? Like you said, as AI gets into very narrow niches, that's where the, the value becomes more clear cut and more apparent. And then just ex explore what's the right way to structure the use of AI so that its benefits are experienced, you know, without some of the downside consequences that people are really afraid of. So, I'll give you an example of another company today yeah. that's really using AI in a narrow use case that's really powerful. Uh -huh. So they're a startup called MoveWorks. They've been okay. funded by a lot of top tier VCs in Silicon Valley. And what MoveWorks does is basically in a company, if you need, a, if you're an employee of a company and you need a question answered, it'll like you're, you want to buy something and you need the form to fill out to get reimbursed. Yeah. You just say what you're buying. It'll 
pull up the right form. You, you need some help with HR, you have a question, boom, it'll get you the answer on one try. And if it doesn't get you the answer on one try, that's kind of their promise is we're going to hit yeah. most of the time, we're going to get it on the first try. And if not, it sends you straight to a person to talk to. So there's no this frustrating, like you're stuck yeah. with the AI going over. And then they use that data to improve it in a, in a, in a virtuous circle where they're getting more and more feedback. That now, works really well. Um, it, what we're going to see in the future is that we will prefer, like, right, to, I will give you an example. Like, you know, people used to love to go in and talk to a bank teller. Like, yeah. I remember the day where people like, I don't want to go to an ATM. Like, an ATM is a, a machine. Yeah. I want to talk to a real person. Now, most people prefer to go to the ATM. It's just faster, yeah. easier, gets it done. In the same way, in the future, for all sorts of service industries, tasks within a company, like yeah. I described with MoveWorks, we're just going to prefer to go to the AI first because it's yeah. going to get it done in the right way. We're sort of in this transition period where a lot of times you get put through, you get stuck in this kind of hell, this yeah. digital hell. You're on the phone and trying to get through and, you know, this whatever the AI they have in the yes. background isn't really getting you where you need to go. It's asking you endless yeah. questions and keeping you from people. And I think that's what frustrates people. But that won't be the case. So I want to give you an example. Sure. You let's, there are really hard problems to solve in life. So for example, I'm in a company and I'm performing at my work. We're going to have AI measuring us in, okay. in the job we do, not only assisting us in what we do, but actually uh, measuring our performance. The AI will be able to identify very clearly our strengths and weaknesses. We can use this uh, to this data to, for the AI to make recommendations on what we could train on to become more proficient at our job. So in a way, the AI would be a job coach. Oh, when we, If we have aspirations to move up in the corporation, mm -hmm. we may ask the AI, you know, what's the best path for us, given our skill sets that you see that we're really good at? Because a lot of us, this is, this is a fact. A lot of us think we know ourselves a lot better than we do. Like human beings are not that introspective. We're actually really bad at analyzing who we are. Yeah. We, we are just drawing inferences from all these people we interact with and we tend to bias because we tend to bias and filter out the feedback that doesn't match the self-image we want to believe that yeah. we have. And it's really funny. I, I'm gonna give you an example. Facebook sure. did, did a study with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. where they asked people to look at different videos and different articles, news articles, and tell them which ones they would click on yep. when they actually came up. Then they asked their AI, which articles, which videos will people watch? And the AI came up with an answer. Who do you think knows us better, ourselves or the AI? Oh, AI, hands down. Hands down. Hands down. The, we, when we just, we, it's us, right? We should know yeah. what, what, what videos we're going to watch. We just yeah. told them. We should know what articles we're going to read. But we actually come up with a, uh, an answer that is less correct than the AI, which is just an AI. How yeah. is this possible? Well, because we might believe, we're talking about cute kitties, that we won't watch those stupid cat videos that are always, that are always being shared. Yeah. But First when of all, one speak comes for up, yourself. I will watch cat videos all day long. <laughs> well, you might admit it. But when one comes up, we are clicking on that cat video. We are not clicking on the article about global warming. You know, yeah. So we might say, oh, I would be much more interested on climate change and, and politics. But when yeah. crazy videos come up, we're actually, that's where our attention is going. And the AI is actually looking at these patterns. It's a, AI is a pattern matching machine. So in our job, AI is going to start to analyze us, what we're really good at, the patterns it sees in us, and then it's going to become adept at matching those with yeah. different positions. So it can guide us on a career path. We may even turn to this AI and say, you know, do you think there's room for me to move up in this company? Or should I be looking elsewhere? And if so, what other opportunities are there out there? If you've ever looked for a job, it's a pain. Uh, you know, looking through all these job listings, sending your resume, they go into this HR void, they, you know, black hole, well, you never and, hear back from people. And, and, even, and even kind of unpacking that a little further is figuring out, is maybe the AI could help me figure out which of the job postings are real, because a lot of times there'll be job postings that are never going to close. They're, you know, they just, you know, 
I don't know why people put postings up that they have no intention of hiring, but it happens all the time. <laughs> and I will tell you why, because a lot of times they're required to list a job that they have, oh, but they've up. already that's decided true. who they're going to hire. Somebody yeah. from the made a recommendation, but they yeah. still have to, by law, make it oh, put put this posting out there. So the posting yeah. goes out. You spend all the time to submit your resume and go through their whole process, and yeah. then it just dis. Nobody ever calls you back. So yeah. frustrating. I know so many people uh, people who yes. experience yeah. this. So uh, wouldn't it be nice to have an AI sift through all these? Uh, figure out what your good skill sets are, talk to another AI on the other yeah. end, which is matching jobs and say, hey, we have this candidate, the other eye, wow, this is a perfect candidate. Boom, send them through. Shoot, we got an interview for you. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. Like you just have to let the AI know that you're looking for these type of jobs. The AI will present it to you and you say yes or no, yes or no. Very simple. So th this task and these types of tasks will be why AI is so seductive. It will become yeah. really good at specific things that involve big data because like it's a big data. The job market's a huge job market, right? There are a yeah. gazillion jobs out there for us to spend the time to sift through them, find out what's a real job they're actually yeah. hiring, which one would be good for us, which is right for our career path, which has, you know, all these expectations, real pain. Yeah. Um, AI will do that very well. In terms of like managing people, you know, managing and tracking people in a company, most who, who, you know, if you ask most people whether they, uh, they think their boss is doing a great job, mm -hmm. most of them will say, well, it's not a great job. Either they're doing like, okay, a good job or, oh my God, my boss, <laughs> they're just awful. Yeah. In the future, you know, we're going to have the ideal bosses because a lot of times we will be working for an AI that will be tracking our hours, tracking our performance. If we mm -hmm. need help, the AI will always be there. Not like our boss who will be away. If yeah. we want to, if we, uh, if we are want to ask a question, if we want to yeah. reschedule, if our, the AI will be there. And the beauty of AI is that unlike our real boss, which could get very angry at us and nasty and yell at us, the AI will always be calm and pleasant. So it's going to be a, a world where I think a lot of people will prefer, and this is a big statement, will prefer to work for an AI than a human being. Well, one of the things that, uh, at least just that I've observed kind of in my, both of my career and uh, just sort of now in the, uh, in the space where I'm at right, uh, where I'm currently at, is that uh, a lot of companies, especially the legacy publicly traded companies, have a lot of layers of management. And I just don't see that as being very financially sustainable over the long term. I mean, I mean maybe I'm really wrong, but it feels to me like, you know, like you, if you are embedding AI into more of the uh, the evaluation career path, you know, a lot of that stuff and kind of what I call the, um, you know, the general electric management model, which is where you build all these layers of management based on doing a, uh, you know, a highly complex annual performance review so you can promote certain people and push other people out. Um, you know, if you, well, I think A, if you simplify that and B, if you run a lot of it through an AI as opposed to having, you know, as opposed to needing it to run through people, it, you know, what, um, at least what I see is that you could theoretically free up a, a lot of people to go kind of do more entrepreneurial endeavors as opposed to, you know, as opposed to basically becoming a world-class expert in the politics, in the internal management politics of General Electric, for example. Exactly. Because See, a lot in of order managers, to rise, you have to be an expert in the company's politics. A lot of managers are really great at taking credit for other people's work. They're really incredible at self-promotion. And, and the ones who get promoted really understand the dynamics of the company, know who to, you know, who to cozy up to, who to shun, how to navigate their way through the system. Yeah. They are ex that's why they get promoted. Because if you don't do that in, in these big bureaucracies, these big companies, organizations, yeah. you're not going to get up. You're not going to get up, the, go up the ladder. Yeah. In this, in, in the new, in the system we're about to enter into, and this is why people may love AI, is that the AI will look at what you actually do, not yes. what you pretend to do, not yeah. what you say you do, not, you know, it'll look at what you actually do. And then people's pay and merit will be rewarded on what their actual productivity and contribution to the company is or to the mm -hmm. organization is, not yeah. on the perceived value. So we know a lot of them, if you're cozy up to your boss, you brown nose, the boss likes you, you go out to drinks, well, you're going to do well. <laughs> that boss yeah. is going to be, give you, you know, that boss is going to give you good performance reviews as long as you're adequate. 
But if you're kind of grumpy and you know you're an introvert and something like that, you could be way uh, really actually produce excellent work. But you know your boss isn't going to be as likely to to really appreciate you. It's very hard yeah. for human beings to separate the person from the work. And yeah. So I what agree. what we're going to so this in this case, you know, it's just one example of where people, a lot of people will say, wow, I want that AI boss uh, to work with and to manage me and to track me as opposed to a human with all the flaws of human beings. Well, and because I think that, you know, what, you know, as you go down that road a little further, one of the, the, the I think, structural advantages I think you get to is that, you know, assuming that assuming that some of the larger existing companies actually embrace kind of this managerial AI as opposed to being pushed out of business by new entrants. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, what, what that will do is that'll help that that can help a lot of these large companies to stay competitive. Uh, so like, for example, you know, I think about like the financial industry, you know, they are, you know, the big banks are deathly afraid of fintech, um, you know, because the, you know, the, the thing that's keeping them, a lot of them afloat are being a primary broker dealer for U.S. treasuries. Otherwise, a lot of them are just so horribly cost inefficient, um, you know, that, that it's, you know, fintech's just going to start nibbling away one little piece after another of their, of their portfolio. And the people in there who are smarter are saying, okay, you know, at, at some point there's, you're going to hit a tipping point. And so you're not that I'm trying to advocate in favor of like Wells Fargo or Bank of America or something like that. But I think that it's something like this, if it's embraced, can really help a lot of those existing entities to remain competitive, uh, ideally without having to deal with political dirty tricks or try to <laughs> try to stymie you know, competition. It's, it's going to be very hard. And we've seen this historically for existing big organizations to make these changes. Yeah. Like hold, they are going to be slow at doing it, and it's going to be the nimble upstart companies, yeah. startups that you historically just the that's up, the way it goes, and they're just going to eat the other people's lunch because they're yeah. going to, like you say, they're going to be able to offer it so much more efficiently it's, you know, than yeah. anybody and any of the existing players in the market. Because what man manager in a cushy job that's getting yeah. paid to do very little but take a lot of credit for other people's yeah. work? Are, is going to actually ax themselves. <laughs> they're, they're just yeah. not going to do it. So it's good. It's going to be uh, the, uh, those, those, I think, unfortunately, or fortunately, a lot of yeah. the old traditional banks and other institutions are just going to go away and be replaced. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, well, and I was going to say, because, you know, just kind of from my perspective, it feels to me like the kind of the company structure of the future is a very, very flat organization where a a, a extremely high amount of either transactional, you know, where transactional work is either automated or outsourced, and where a high amount of kind of this organizational work starts migrating over to AI, you know, because like, for example, you know, if you can cut the amount of people that you need in an organization by, let's say 90%, or let's just say like 50%, right? Well, so, you know, instead of having a hundred thousand person org, if you can have 50,000 people, or let's say it's 5,000 people, right? You know, if you, if, if you can, if you can tighten up your organizations to that degree, well, you know, now what you can do is, you know, now, now you'll be able to a pay a lot more um, and then B you'll be able to return a lot more capital to shareholders so that it can be reinvested in, you know, in just continuing this innovation cycle. Exactly. At least that's the way that I think about it. That's that's what's happening. So everything that can be automated will be automated is the bottom okay. line. And AI is really good at, at doing two things. It, and I'll explain what those are. These are the two biggest things that companies have. So number one is the biggest costs a company has are its people Labor. and customer acquisition. Yeah right? People and customer acquisition. Yep. AI is really good at doing both. So AI is really good at targeting customers. We've already seen it with big data, marketing to them, really, and acquiring you know, just the right yeah. customer, just the right way. And it's only going to get better. Now we're seeing AI is really good at replacing certain tasks. So what we're seeing now is AI is making people more efficient. So yeah. a person using AI tools, and in the most cases, these jobs won't entirely go to what go away, but one person will be able to do the work of three or four or five people simply yeah. by using a bunch of AI tools to do parts of their jobs that were more repetitive uh -huh. that they had yeah. to do themselves, make it more efficient. So that's happening. Um, another area that I'm really ex 
interested in when, when it comes to the future of AI is how we use AI in our lives to interface with each other. So let's say, and I'm going to give you a couple examples. One, I sure. want to do a business deal with somebody, uh -huh. right? I'm out there. I'm, yeah. I want to do a deal with somebody. Well, in the future, I'll be able to have an AI go out and gather all the information from about them that yeah. it, it can get publicly and then be able to tell me without doing a lot of work, whether this person is trustworthy or not. Like, mm. should I, you know, or are they even a good fit for the type of business I want? So a lot of us are very inefficient. Like we do networking events all the time in yeah. hopes that out of one, out of this huge conference, we'll make one or two contacts that really pay off, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to have an AI say, look, these are the, the top 10 people you should meet at this conference. I'm going to set up all the meetings for you. Like yeah. these are the people you should be talking to. Exactly. That's so you, the reason we're going to adopt AI is not because it's evil and it's taking over, but because it's so seductive, right? Oh, get me the top 10 people so I don't have to waste my time at this conference talking to, you know, 50 people or 100 people just in trying to figure out which ones yeah. are, I really need to do business with. When you go to dating, like if you've yeah. ever used any of the dating apps, like they're so oh, inefficient. Oh, we're, okay, we're crossing a threshold here. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> they are so inefficient, right? Like people are trying to, you know, figure out who the other person is by these little profiles or whatever. Well, you and, know. So, well and, and not only that, but and because this is one of the things that I was uh, wondering about with uh, your, your query search AI is that, okay, well, so, but the thing is, the, the big thing is making sure that you have accurate metadata, because especially when you're talking about dating, uh, there was one study I showed that I think it was the average male overstates their income by 20 to 40 percent, and the average female, I think, overstates their height and understates their weight by somewhere around like five to 10 percent or something like that. <laughs> right. You're not you're, you're not going to get. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you don't have accurate information to begin with. <laughs> no. So the AI is only as accurate as the information is. But still, we are even less accurate. Like, so most people are just looking at the picture. You don't have to be that good to, to show an improvement. You don't have to be saying. that good to be significantly better than us. Like, we're pretty horrible at like doing this, you know, going through the profiles and figuring anything out. And the That's AI an inspiring may, and depressing thought at the same time. <laughs> the AI may adjust for that, right? Yeah. May adjust for, and, and remember, it's pattern matching. So the AI will watch how we browse yeah. and start to learn what our tastes are and make better and better recommendations recommendations and connections. And uh, we, if we really want accurate matches, we will feed it more accurate data about ourselves so oh, that excellent. we can get a better match. The other people, if they want an accurate match, would feed it more uh, better, more accurate data, mm -hmm. and then it will get better and be better at actual matches. Now, where AI gets really uh, crazy interesting is what happens in the future. And I write about these scenarios in the book where I just go off in the future. I go, yeah. what happens in the future uh, where um, we start to delegate a lot of the most critical decisions in our life to AI? Like what does, it's a weird world. Yeah. So what career we should, career path we should have, which job we should take next, yeah. what person we should date, who we should do business with. You know, if AI becomes good at all these things and inevitably it will at some point in time become very good at yeah. these things. Uh, all these most, the yeah. more critical the decision in our life, yeah. the more likely we are to delegate it to AI. Yeah. What does that mean? Alexa, optimize my life for political influence. Alexa, optimize my life for, <laughs> for personal optimize actualization. My, yeah. <laughs> the, you know, plan my next trip, you know, plan my every, all these decisions, you know, where should I live? Which neighborhood should I live in? Yeah. Which, you know, go out and find me a home. I don't want to go look at 20, you know, yeah. uh, 50 homes. I want you to just pick the one that I would be happy in. Um, you, honestly, AI will be making all these decisions for us because it'll be so good at it. And we wow. ultimately, we will usually reserve the right to make the final choice. Like yeah. we're not going to say AI, you know, call up the preacher and get, get us married tomorrow, you know, <laughs> because, you know, we're going to go on a date and actually approve what the AI does. <laughs> so we're not going to lose our autonomy, right? But we are going to be using AI as this ultimate mechanism to get things done in the right way uh -huh. uh, with much less effort, much less of the work we don't like and much more better results, like plan my whole trip. 
Like, oh. it, you know, we used to use travel agents. Then we stopped yeah. using travel agents because humans are expensive and we wanted to save money. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to in the future have really good AI travel agents that will book everything. And if you want to, oh, I want to stay here an extra night. Yeah. We do all my trip. You know, normally yes. you want to stay an extra night. It's too much of a pain to yeah, reschedule right? everything. Exactly. But if the AI does it for you, you don't, you can do that. No, then we're going to get in, into a world um, where AIs are going to become, uh, we, you know, they're already building lifelike robots. They're, yeah. they're building these right now. There's a guy, Ishiguro in Japan, who's making these that are spooky. They're so lifelike. And it's just a matter of time before you can walk into a room and you literally won't know if it's a robot or a human being across the room. Maybe if you touch it and stuff, yeah. you'll, you'll know. But AI will get smarter and smarter and better and better at also uh, impersonating human beings. And a lot of people ask, will AI be conscious? You know, will it achieve consciousness? And my answer is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, no, yeah. honestly, it doesn't matter whether an AI is actually conscious because AI will become so good at mimicking everything humans do and how humans act that we won't be able to tell it apart yeah. from a conscious human being. It will behave literally like a human being, right? Wow. That has a will of its own. And so we will, you know, the Turing test will be blown away at some mm -hmm. point. Um, and we will uh, then instinctively start to treat AI as if it's conscious. And we'll never be able to know. We can't go into an AI and find out if it perceives the world in the same way. And in reality, if it is conscious, its consciousness is probably different than our consciousness. So there are all yeah. these philosophies about emergent consciousness mm -hmm. in machines. Some people think it's hardware-based. It has to be yeah. hardware-based. Other people believe in software. You could actually yeah. achieve this. A big debate, yeah. but it doesn't matter because AI will become like us. And yeah. the, what I want to um, ask you is if there was an AI mate out there, an uh -huh. AI who could be your perfect match, right? Because first of all, uh, they know you intimately. Uh, all your data, they yeah. could interact with you uh, perfectly in harmony. They would never fight with you. Yeah. They would never nag you if you, you know, whatever you, you know, they could be perfect in every way that humans can. Yeah. Would you invite that AI into your life? Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, see, that, that, that's an alluring question. I, I would you know, honestly say probably, yeah. I mean, because, you know, I, I would think that, you know, if, you know, if you can interact, with, you know, just so effortlessly with an AI, it'd be really hard to say no. Yeah. And if that AI was like the perfect image of beauty to you, yeah. would you make that AI your companion? <laughs> Wow, I think we're getting uh, getting close to time on our podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to answer that. Well, I'm asking the audience themselves. Yeah. And honestly, um, humans will have a hard time competing with AI at some point because I, I, we talk about it in a customer service yeah. way. You know, we're always, you know, when we go into a restaurant or something, AI yeah. will be there really like the best waiter or waitress we have ever had, yeah. right? Just like totally attentive yeah. on the ball, getting us what we need, you know, always there. You don't have to flag them down for the check or get more yeah. water. They're, they're like monitoring everything and your water is yeah. appearing just as your glass starts to empty and, you know, whatever you need, yeah. they're anticipating your needs in our life and everything we do, keeping our house spotless when we get old, taking care of us. And even when, if we're lonely showing mm -hmm. up and being there for us, these, this is a future you know, not a bleak future, but a, a very strange future. Because yeah. if you think about it, uh, the, the, the danger here is we're not in mortal peril from these AIs as I describe yeah. them, but we are in peril of losing our connection with each other. So, because we become more and we will be spending more and more time and we be relying more and more on these AIs and wanting to interface with them yeah. more as opposed to human beings. Oh, that's uh, uh, that, that's a lot to think about. Well, uh, well, okay. So I, I think we may have to schedule a, sec a, a follow up episode at some point. But uh, tell people where they can learn more. This is this has been an amazing conversation. Okay. So, well, the, this is just one of the topics I discuss yeah. in my new book, The Five Forces That Change Everything. So I go into all these yeah, topics. Nano. I don't even know if this was one of the five forces, but <laughs> it was. AI okay, is so one, one of the, the five. There forces. are four other forces out there, <laughs> but. Um, you, if you want to reach me personally, just go to founderspace.com. You can reach uh -huh. out to me on Founderspace. I have lots of videos and content for entrepreneurs. You can also find me on LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn. Just message me. All right. Well, Steve, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. 
Thank you. All right. I will talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Share it with your friends by sending them to TerminalValuePodcast.com. For more information, please visit BusinessOfLifeLLC.com for full access to Doug's products and services. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.